Always. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Manga Pod. We are a weekly podcast which we all get together after we read all or part of a manga. We discuss it with friendship, love, and lots of spoilers. This week, we are talking Ace of Diamond, volumes 5 through 10, chapters 41 through 89, and we are kicking off our March Madness Sports Manga Month. Uh, every March, yeah. we celebrate like true sports fans and read sports manga for every week of the month, and it's great. So great, so many feelings that are great about it. Uh, I'm Aaron, happily Aaron, your host. Uh, and with me are two of my three lovely co-hosts, as well as a very special guest. So if everyone can introduce themselves, please. Hi, everybody. I'm Dodger. And that's it. <laughs> no feelings about the manga. <laughs> <laughs> your turn. Your turn. Lou. My, my, my name is Lou. From uh, Lou Talks Anime. And uh, that's it. <laughs> You're done! <laughs> Everybody's keeping it so like short and sweet. <laughs> I know, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm like, oh no. <laughs> um, I'm Alyssa from Anime Intensity. I do a lot of uh, anime related videos on my channel. Uh, this is my second time on MangaPod, so thanks for having me, and I can't wait to talk more. Ace of Diamond. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Thank you for coming back. We're so yeah, what she said. What, what, what Alyssa said. She's yeah. very professional. Yeah. Ace of Diamond. Manga. Yeah. MangaPod. Uh, thank you so much for coming back again. I'm so happy that you're back to talk this with us. Uh, if you guys have never joined us for a MangaPod before, what we like to do, give you a short, spoiler-free description of the manga that we read, aka summary, that will be read by Alyssa, and then we'll give you our spoiler-free recommendations, whether we think you should spend time going to read this manga or not, yes, you should, um, and that way, if you don't <laughs> want to be spoiled for it, by the time I get to spoiler section, you can take your leave, come back and watch the VOD of this after you've read uh, the chapters, and yeah, that's that, so yeah, uh, so please don't post any spoilers for anything in the chat until we get to spoilers section and after that please don't post any spoilers ch past chapter 89 thank you uh spoiler free description please okay so uh the story follows Ajun sawamura a pitcher who joins an elite school with a brilliant catcher named kazuya miyuki the best character by the way um together with My the bad. rest of the team they strive for japan's story koshien champions championships through hard work and determination yeah it's so yeah. concise so yeah. Quick. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, all right. Would anyone like to go first? Um, I mean, I can since I'm wearing a, a shirt of the main team. I love Ace of Diamonds so much. It has a special place in my heart because I don't like baseball, but I love this manga and this anime so much. Um, yeah, I just adore it. I love the characters and their interactions is probably my favorite part of it, uh, but it does the sport really well, especially if you're not, even if you're not interested in it, it presents it in a way that's easily followable, like I thought. Um, and the art is great. The t intensity is there when it needs to be there. The humor is there. Uh, the emotional happy and sad moments are there. Everything you're looking for in sports manga, it has it. And so I absolutely love this manga and highly recommend it. Um, I'll go next. Uh, while I enjoy the manga, which I do, um, if you have yet to experience this story, I would actually recommend reading the first part of the manga that we read, and then from that point, switching to the anime. Mm. Because I feel that uh, through animation, it does so much um, in terms of like what it it adds to the story and, and mm -hmm. specifically the games and, and in terms of like how intense they are. Um, and um, while it does lose how streamlined the, the games are in the manga, I feel like that's worth sacrificing. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen 50 episodes of the anime and I think it's phenomenal. So it's, good. it's, it's good. pretty, it's pretty, pretty good. Uh, and... But specific to the manga, I think it's, I think it's a, an enjoyable read. And if, the anime was not an option, I would definitely recommend the manga. Awesome. And when you do the anime, you get Miyuki's laugh, and Miyuki's laugh is amazing in the anime. <laughs> so, all right, anyone else? Who next? Okay, I guess I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I know, I really love this manga because 
you know, there's something about sports manga where it's kind of like, it's so youthful and it has so much spirit and just seeing everybody on the team and this teamwork is just so lovely to see. I absolutely recommend it. I think it's so much fun and everyone on the team is hilarious. So I just love them all. And I still haven't watched the anime yet, but I'll get there. (laughs) It's something that I really enjoy though. I really enjoy the manga and knowing that there's like so many more chapters beyond what we've read so far. Mm -hmm is crazy because I'm like, how am I ever going to catch up to all of this? But yeah. it's <laughs> something that I want to do. Yeah. And there's a second, uh, this is, there's like another spinoff, like this ended and now there's another, it's like Ace of Diamond 2 or something. Two, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It just won't stop. <laughs> keep going. <laughs> so much baseball. Um, <clears throat> I, I have not, I have also not watched the anime. I enjoy Ace of Diamond quite a bit. I do think that uh, what we read last time um, was more enjoyable than this section because this section, like the highlight points, despite there being games going on constantly, the highlights for me were the like strong character development moments. Mm-hmm. Um, and the games themselves, and maybe this is why. Uh, Maybe this is why Lou is like, you should switch to the anime. The yeah. games themselves kind of blended together a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I still enjoyed it. It was still a very fast and enjoyable read. Um, but I, it did have me wondering, like, I wonder if this, is, this section is better in the anime. <laughs> yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah, still recommend it, though, for sure. Awesome. Well, if you guys do not want to be spoiled, now is the time to take your leave. Uh, like we said, you can go back and read uh, read it. Come back and watch the bottom of this later. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into spoiler section. Countdown, please. Five, four, three, <laughs> two, one. Whatever. Yuki is gone. That and whatever the noise Dodger just made has also gone. <laughs> That, yeah, that is that is awesome. Man. I Thank will, you. Welcome. <laughs> My I'm pregnant and I'm trying to adjust myself in a chair noise. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, so uh, Muki is also good. Um, sweet. Uh, what we usually do is we talk about uh, what were you expecting before reading this manga. Um, since this is the second reading of it, uh, is there anything you guys want to touch on that you were expecting going into reading this section of it? Otherwise, we can just jump right into like <coughs> training camp and then the games and stuff that we saw. <coughs> um, I was expecting to give more of a crap about the first stringers. Like, yeah. everyone in the first string, like, this is the part of the manga where you really start to connect with them. Mm-hmm. Because uh, at this point, uh, it's it, it's moved a, a little bit away from Sawamura and his, like, the story is, has been more towards building up the rest of the team and making them uh, more interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, this is why I kind of, like, have this idea of switching to the anime at this point. Because I feel like... Um, the emotions are really communicated well um, via the animation as opposed to uh, what we got in the manga. Mm -hmm. And also the fact that um, the games are more intense, which makes the slice of life, like there is a a sort of different feeling when you're watching like the more slice of life or the more like, um, I guess, uh, like those character moments when they're practicing that, um, I don't know. It, it's just a, a different experience, and it's so much better mm-hmm. animated yeah. than it is yeah. um, in this mm-hmm. form. And it's, I don't know. I didn't like this as much as the first section. Mm-hmm. I didn't, yeah. and I remember in the anime it was the other way around. That yeah. the beginning of the anime sucked because of um, because it it was just kind of like not going anywhere. It was spinning its wheels until about like episode twenty when it really picked up. So mm-hmm. the I agree with uh, letting it like reading the manga up until the training camp and starting the anime with the training camp because the training camp in the anime like I liked it here but in the anime too it is so great it is 
real like i was what the first time i watched it i was running on a treadmill i was like i can't stop these boys just keep catching these balls like i can't stop running if they can do this they're turning the lights on on the field i can't stop yeah i i kind of felt like um the for whatever reason i don't know what it was but like the the training or like practice matches that they did Mm-hmm. A lot of times in in sports manga, like in Kuroko, right? If even if they're having a practice match with somebody, I'm like, "You boys have got to win," right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but like in this, it felt like the stakes were so because they kept uh, they kept saying over and over again, like, "Well, we can't show all of our hands," which was you know subtext manga slang for we're not going to do anything super cool in this match. <laughs> Yeah. Like we don't we don't want the other team to know what we got up our sleeve. So like they purposefully had matches where they were like, nothing cool is going to happen, but some character stuff might happen. And I was like, okay, I guess I'll wait for that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so it was yeah, I thought that the first half of what we read this in this section just didn't it didn't feel like I have had a lot of momentum, unfortunately. So yeah, it's like the the chapters that we read previously maybe were a bit more fun for me. I feel like as like we read on for these chapters, it was a, it was a training camp and then we had various matches against different teams. And at times, you know, one game would be like 10 chapters mm-hmm. and it would last a while. So it's like, yeah, you're you're seeing them play the game and you see how the stakes are so high and, you know, like yeah. they really have to to win and to do what the best that they can but a lot of it did seem kind of like dragged out (laughs) and Mm -hmm. but it was still it's just i think that if i were to see it in anime form it probably would just feel better like i feel like the everything would have been conveyed better Mm -hmm. in anime format than in the manga it was still good but i think that i need to check the anime out Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the pacing of it in the anime makes it much more like high stakes. Even if it's not, like right. you just feel that same intensity because you don't like. Yeah, what you guys said, like you don't really get that intensity match really until I think until like the last match, like that we really see. Like that's the first time yeah. where you yeah. get another team that you're like, okay, I kind of I I know they're gonna lose, but I really want this other team. Like I'm still rooting for them. But yeah, yeah that's, otherwise, like, I don't, I've read this manga, like, the first hundred chapters or so, I've read it, like, two times, this might be, like, my third going through, and I can't remember the names or, like, even the special powers or whatever of the, like, other teams until we get to uh, Shun, until we get to yeah. him, like, the instant yeah. I see him, I'm like, dude, I love you, like, I know you, but the people before, I don't really, can't even, like, picture like it all just kind of runs together but i have an idea about like I, what's important about it is like you said the character development that's happening with each one because it's mm-hmm. so slow like in building um like with uh Furu, Furu, um he ha- seeing him like in the training camp like it's understandable why they had the matches for him with the training camp and stuff so that in his first matches at co- at the like Marathon. Marathon. That's not the word. <laughs> the it's marathon. Okay. Take your time. You know where I'm talking about. Um, to mm-hmm. show like yeah. his how his weakness is that he puts way too much power into it. So um, that's like what it's the pacing of that is shown. But it's not like you said the matches aren't doesn't make for super exciting matches for the training. Yeah, and I I also feel really bad for saying this because I'm one of the people who constantly harps like I really wish that they would mix up the tropes once in a while in all of the manga that we read. But I was so shocked that it took like a chapter for Tenya to come back. <laughs> like he got smashed in oh, the Tanva? face and they were they yeah. were like, well, we're going to make the decision to keep him as the ace and when he's ready to come back i was like oh shit this is the arc where their ace is just gone and then all of the baby boys are going to have to like learn how to do shit with no backup i'm so ready for this and then in like a chapter 10 you showed up with like a bandaid on it <laughs> i was like it's fractured oh, it's back 
<laughs> and he shaved his head. He shaved his head. Yeah. I mean, I... <laughs> And part of me was like, oh, that's kind of nice that he wasn't just, like, in the hospital forever. Yeah. And then later they were like, he'll never play baseball again because his jaw doesn't work right. <laughs> right? Like, I was glad that they didn't do anything like that. And at the same time, I was going, man, I now feel like there's less pressure on, on the main boys. But, again, they're, they're slowly turning it into more of an ensemble situation where you're mm -hmm. supposed to care about everybody. So. Yeah. I, I think part of the reason why they didn't go that route is because they kind of went that route in the last section of reading with Chris, where yeah, he's the injured, that's true. The injured that's boy true. Who, who has to sit on the bench, but is really, really good. Yeah. So I like that with Tombo, what they do is like he's injured, but they're going to still have him as the ace. And so everybody is questioning, like, why haven't they brought out the ace yet? And they just keep showing their other pictures. They're like, wait, who's the really the ace? I don't understand. <laughs> Tiny child. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. Like, it was really sad that he had that huge pep up talk. Him and Miyuki were finally like making a battery. They were doing great, and then he fucking gets just smashed in the jaw. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> like Tomba is a character I still really, I haven't like really connected with. I don't care that much about because I just care so much about the other pictures. But I still felt so bad. For him when that happened. It's like he's finally coming into himself. Bye. Such a low key dick for like the manga <laughs> up until this point. Yes. And it's like, I understand the weight that's on my shoulders as the ace, and then just got slapped. <laughs> like, no. Yeah. Yeah. I like that the other character, like the coach, was like, well, shit. <laughs> like, there goes my plan. <laughs> Changing it up. I mean, that's about the extent of his emoting. <laughs> well, he shit. did have a lot of feelings when Tama got his face smashed, though. He got really like, <gasps> he did. yeah. I really like the coach. He's so he like, just so stoic. I love it, but he still cares a lot. Um, I like see the moments when he steps in and is super hands on, and everybody's like, the coach. <laughs> <laughs> The coach is doing shit. <laughs> the general, as Salomar calls him. <laughs> <Yeah. He's> like... <laughs> um, no, the scene when like you said, when he's really hands-on are some of the coolest scenes that I thought. Like when he goes against Salomara, like has Salomara pitch to him. Um and also during the training when he starts hitting like all the balls out and is like, all right, I'll be doing the hitting now. And he all those people are like, oh god. <laughs> like shit. <laughs> Um, I, should we talk about characters a little bit? Um, because we didn't get a lot of character development, especially from like mainly from the two first year pitchers, um, uh, Fruta and Salamara. Is there one you guys would like to talk about first, or both, whichever? What do you guys think about? Actually, I do have a question. What do you guys think about Fruta now that we're into this section? Because in the first section, he seems very like super rival Sasuke kind of angsty. Totally. Um, yeah. So I want to hear what you guys' thoughts are now of seeing his um, his development in this and seeing more of his character. I like that he's kind of a dork. <laughs> yeah. Like, I yeah. think, <laughs> like, they could have just played, you know, straight Sasuke and it would have been perfectly fine, but, like, kind of boring. So I, I like that he's, most he's mostly a dork. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it redeems him so much. Mm -hmm. I I like that he's not he's not purposefully an asshole like pretty much ever mm -hmm. he's just kind of yeah he's just kind of awkward <laughs> yeah <laughs> and sometimes it comes across assholey but um I think like this whole this whole kind of odd training arc with him of like we need to get his stamina up and then them realizing, oh, fuck, if he's out in the sun for, like, 0.5 minutes, he dies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, like, all of that wound up, uh, I don't know, they're, like, they're creating external barriers mm -hmm. for him, aside from just needing to be a better pitcher. And I don't know if story-wise that's to keep him and Sawamura, like, around the same level, because without mm -hmm. those other elements... Sawamura probably wouldn't 
have been given the chances that he has so far in the mm-hmm. story. Yeah. Yeah. So. What I really liked about Furia is that um, he has a great sense of determination. Mm-hmm. So it's like he could be out there pitching for, you know, 100 pitches and everything. And he's there for a long time. And he might end up, like, messing up a few times. But, you know, there's a scene where um, Miyuki's like, hey, you know, you got this, you can do it, you know, whatever. Because Miyuki, that's just how he is. He's always like, yeah, you can do it. So, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sometimes. With so, a caveat of, but here's me trying to make your life harder. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So it's like, I really liked how Furia, um, he, even despite messing up, hearing this like advice and stuff like that he still has like that fire in his eyes he's Mm -hmm. like i can still go on i can still do this and that's what i find like really charming about his character it's just like he can just go on and on and on and still (laughs) have that fierce thing to him and i really like that so i i grew to really like his character within these chapters because of just his dedication to the sport and his uh, his interactions with um, Sawabuda as well, as well, because like that time when with the tire. At oh my god, that's one of my favorite scenes. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that was great. So I just really like how they are. I can't say getting along, but like just their interactions with mm-hmm. each other is yeah. just—it's so great to see, and I love it. So yeah. yeah. Um, something that I like about Furia is how they're, um, he's, like, the prodigy, the monster, but he's obviously weak in certain areas, and I really like how they're showing, um, how naive he is in terms of what it means to be the ace and what it means to carry your team's expectations, um, and I'm really liking how they're showing, having that be his character arc, because he hasn't played with anybody, like, his middle school, like, season sucked, like, no one wanted to play with him, um, so now he's the pitcher, and he was told that he's the ace until Tomba comes back. And so he's trying to take on, like, this is the senior's last, like, caution. Like, what, I have to carry all of this, and he's just not getting it. And so I really like yeah. that that's not something that's been, he's overcome right away. Um, uh, I, also, I also like that he's not exactly crumbling under the pressure. Mm-hmm. That, you know, yeah. he understands his burden, and he's doing his best. And he doesn't want to back down. Um, so I, I, I just think that for his character arc, it it really matters that he's put in the in this position where he has to struggle because I feel like he was created to be an overpowered character mm-hmm. and he needed some some flaws to overcome to really endear him to the audience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I, I I like that both of them have been over over the chapters that we read have been obsessing over the idea of gaining the trust of their teammates and it's very obvious that they're like but how do I do that <laughs> yeah like how do how do I how do I get that and it's like you get good so people can depend on you right? like <laughs> They're just like, oh man, the trust that seems awesome. <laughs> <laughs> they think about it all the time. I think it's so funny. And I really like the moment. Some of my favorite moments are when they realize that the team like does trust them, and the team around them, their fielders are motivating them. Um, where they're like, oh, my team does have my back. In Sawamura, it's interesting the difference in Sawamura and Furia, how they handle that. Like, Furia's like, I gotta I gotta strike everybody out. Like, I have to do it so that they don't have to work as hard. And Sawamura's like, they're flying, guys. I trust you. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're gonna fly. <laughs> I'm gonna do my best. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, should we talk about Sawamura? I want to hear your guys' feels about, sure. about Sawamura now. <laughs> Since he's developed a little bit more since the beginning. What are you guys' such, thoughts on He's such a Naruto. <laughs> yeah. Like, he's that, he's that <laughs> trope of just like, I'm going to be the ace. I'm going to be the Hokage of baseball. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, he's, he's always just a few steps behind. 
but doing his best. And I know that I know that like as he grows and and uh, gets closer with the team, it's it's been really fun watching the interactions change. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm just excited for him to have his like breakthrough moment in terms of his like what talent he does have. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> Aaron's like, that's funny. It happens in two chapters. <laughs> like, See, I'm still stuck on Hokage of baseball. <laughs> Hokage of baseball, Lou. <laughs> what I love about him is that he, like, he is obviously trying to become the ace, but he's not, um, He's not tearing anybody else down around him. He's not trying to demean. Like, he fully um, respects everybody else's power, like, skills. Like, he obviously he gets jealous of her and is, like, pissed off that he's being, like, given more opportunities. But he isn't, like, hating on him or unnecessarily trying to, like, butt heads with him, if that makes sense. Um and he just seems very appreciative and proud of himself for every little step he takes. Like when he gets his number, it's one of like my favorite summer moments where he's like, he's number so 20. Happy. He's like the lowest. <laughs> and he's there before the coach even says his name. He's just like, ah! And he's got his little thing. That is true. It's really endearing that even though, even though he has that personality of like, I'm aiming for the top, even though I'm arguably the weakest um, I like that we have lots of moments where it's obvious he's just grateful for, like, every little thing. Mm-hmm. He's just, like, so excited to be playing baseball. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Uh, I think Sa- Sahura has definitely developed a lot within these chapters. And mm-hmm. especially seeing, like, the last couple of chapters that we read, um, seeing how he went from pretty much like not being so strong on the team to at this point where he pretty much like saved the game in a way Mm -hmm. was a a factor of that game it's just like he really made such progress so I love seeing where he was before and where he's at now and it's just it's a great it's just great to see yeah I just feel so proud of him I feel like I'm his mother watching him (laughs) advance (laughs) (laughs) um Oh, what about Miyuki? Tell me your guys' because we got a lot more like more Miyuki development and seeing him in game in action and stuff in this section. So what are your guys' feelings on my my favorite one of my favorite characters of all time? <laughs> of anything. No pressure. You all right? hate him. You all hate no, him, no right? Pressure, yeah. Right? He doesn't have any he he hasn't had any <laughs> struggles yet. Mm-mm. So no. like so he's the he's the character who's just always making a goof but is always right at the yeah. same time you know and so i'm waiting for him to have a mo- like more moments where he struggles because mm-hmm. as of right now every other character is like hot damn yuki he just sees <laughs> right through everything and he'll say something and they'll be like wow i want to play with that boy <laughs> that, that that sweet boy oh my god the girl the fucking girl who was watching their last game who was like it's a battle of glasses. <laughs> I was like super into it. It was so funny. <laughs> I mean, Miyuki, Miyuki is, is basic is basically Isaiah from Da 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 Da. Probably, <laughs> which is probably why Aaron loves him so Just much. Super chaotic neutral. <laughs> yeah. like, I don't fucking care. <laughs> That's a very good point, Lou. I agree. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I love, um, some of my favorite Miyuki moments are where he gets very serious, um, and not just in a, like, we need to be serious right now, but in a way where you're like, you're a little, like, evil right now, like, your motivations are a little darker than I expected, um, and I really enjoy those moments where that comes out, just because he has such a, like, uh, personality where he's constantly making fun and making light and poking making jabs and sarcastic um so when he gets serious about it and it's not it's like i said it's always kind of like creepy like it's a creepy serious at some points um and so i just really enjoy when he goes into that when he does that well i have to think so what do you like how would you feel like if shun and 
Miyuki had actually been on the same team because we see them on different teams, yeah. but if and you see how both of them really get along, like not, not to get along, but um, like the way that they play is similar, mm-hmm. and they kind of understand the way that they play. So, what yeah. if these two were actually on the same team? Like, I would like to see that. Yeah, there's a lot of times where I'm like, man, if Miyuki was playing with this pitcher, what would happen? Yeah, <laughs> um, which I think is like kind of like what his talent is because people are always like that pitcher or that catcher brings out the best in every pitcher, like, and because he's so adaptable. Um, yeah. So it's just in the fact that he's only a second year too, uh, <laughs> that he's really cocky. I think is really funny that he's so cocky and like to seniors too, even where he's like with Tanba, he's like. Hey, I'm a second year, but I'm still gonna talk to you like you're younger than me, <laughs> kind of a thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, like uh, Dodger said, he hasn't really had a struggle so far. Um, yeah, but I yeah, I love him. I mean, mm. it's I guess the the extent of his struggle is the fact that he's not as good as Chris, and he knows it. Mm-hmm. But he has to carry he has to carry on for Chris and. I think that is about the extent of it. And the thing is, it's not like really like made too much of a deal because I feel like that would take away from like his his shit poster personality. Yeah. <laughs> he has such a shit poster. That is such a good like, way to put he, his personality. He, he has a heart. It's in there somewhere. Mm-hmm. And it's it's a very precious heart. But um yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. He's a fucking shit poster. I was gonna say he's a fucking troll. Like ever yeah. since that, when I first started, well, I was like, I think even in my husband video, I think I call him a troll or a shit, like a little <laughs> shit. I think is what I call him. But yeah, I agree. He's a little shit poster. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like that Chris is still Chris is still there. Um, I'm glad that he. I think obviously because he got put into the position where he know, knows how to get information, um, and he's so good at that. So I'm glad that even with his injury, he's able to stick around and do that stuff. But I th- I like that it's kind of become a meme with them that they're like, ah, oh, Chris's journal is here to save the day. <laughs> mm. <coughs> um, who, I'm trying to think. Yeah, so the, in terms of the games, like you guys said, the um, only real intense game that had a really in- big impact overall was the last one. Uh, that we read. So, what are your guys' feelings on that that game overall? Uh, it really was the first time that we that they played against a team where they were like, "All right, here's a character who's very dynamic that has like a story that makes you want him to keep playing baseball forever." Mm-hmm. And you know, and and also like a team that was just so excited to be playing baseball with him. Like, I think. I'm I'm a super sucker for that kind of stuff. So I was like, oh man, can can they both win? <laughs> yeah. So when they all yeah. started, his team like the crowd started cheering for him. Like the sh- little few little people that were there cheering, I like, I cried. I was like, oh no, they're all yeah. just they're so happy. <coughs> Lou, Alyssa, any thoughts? Um. Uh... The last game was way more emotional than the other ones that we were in. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was really emotional, and you just felt the tension because it's like you have these two teams. They're both trying to win, and you kind of don't know who to root for because you want them both to win because you like them both, and they both have their motivations and everything, and you're just like, what... Who do I who do I want to win? And so I really liked the intensity in that last match. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of sad when it was, you know, done when it finished because I was like, this is actually really good. But it it was pretty impressive. For me, um this match in terms of like <coughs> narrative stakes, well, you, know, you you do kind of empathize with with the with the other team, like there was really no doubt that Sado was gonna win. Oh yeah, you know it's so it's so early in the story for them to to take a loss that um it made it like 
the interest in the in, in the game hinged very much on how much you could empathize with that team, and I think that the mangaka really pulled it off. Um, yes. And it's worth noting, you know, this isn't really a spoiler, but this is more indicative of what the rest of the games feel like mm-hmm. for for the story. Yeah, definitely. So you know, you're That's not going to see a lot yeah. of the a lot of throwaway games. Yeah. Oh, it's the next really, one. What? Everything everything is really <laughs> built up extremely well. Mm-hmm. And um, I like that they don't just rush from game to game later on. Like, they actually take their time to, to build up the game. So I, I feel like if we were to continue reading, that would uh, resolve a lot of the problems that I think all of us have with this section of the reading. Mm-hmm. Right. And yeah. that there's really no delineation between, you know, one game and the next. It, yeah. it just kind of all blends together. Yeah. And mm-hmm. training, like, the the training arc just blended right into these are real games now and yeah, I, I yeah. kept having to remind yeah. myself like oh yeah they're in they're in like an actual thing now <laughs> yeah yeah I what agree. what episode do you guys think Let like say say that i was going to go watch ace of diamond what episode should i start on uh let me look i can't remember the episodes off the top of my head but yeah, same. I will look. I, like I would, I would say somewhere around like episode twenty would probably be the safe bet. But yeah, like... I was um trying to see where are you, Chris? Where are not you, Chris? saying I'm gonna not saying I'm gonna watch anything tonight. Just like um, uh, yes, you will. <laughs> <laughs> um, episode just, like, curious. Episode fourteen is where training camp begins. Why? Okay. So, um, uh, what was I gonna say? Oh, something I was gonna say was um. A feeling that I get with Ace of Diamond um, that sometimes kind of gets lost in other sports manga. Um, I, Whenever I'm watching a game or even like seeing their interactions outside or just their banter, it always, mm-hmm. I never forget that they're high schoolers. Like they always feel like high schoolers to me. They don't feel older than that. Um, and I'm, I don't know if that's because we get so much banter in between the games because some sports manga, it's all about the game. Like the character development always happens in the game. Um, and that's something I really love and appreciate and found like kind of refreshing about the series is that you do get so much character. It's as much about the characters as it is about like the sport itself. Like it seems even more about the characters. And so I've never forgotten that they're high schoolers and that anime sometimes I do just because of the style. (laughs) But, um, but yeah, that's something that I've always appreciated about it. There are definitely a couple of characters, like third year characters, where they wanted yeah. to make sure that you knew, like these are third years, and I'm like, that looks like a grown ass man. <laughs> <laughs> that, that where they're like, like all, whenever they're like year old posed, yeah. when they're posed, and it's like all the team just like standing there, and you're like, oh, it's the team, yeah, yeah. like Tetsu and. Uh, mustache man. I fucking love Tattoo. I love like, Tattoo so like, much. He's such like a kind of like background character, but also the most badass character. Totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's like, ah, oh, he's so cool. Yeah. Just the way he stares people down. <laughs> just, and when he hit, oh like, my God. He has, he has presence. Yeah. You know, like he's on the mountain. Like, you know, it's him. Like he like has this aura about him and like, it's like he always kind of like lives up to that aura and it's always cool as shit when he does. Mm-hmm. I liked um, the, like one of the only bits of uh, training we get, like he's throughout other stuff, but the main focus of him, his training is like, he stands there with the bat for 10 minutes and then swings once. And it's like, I'm good. I'm done. And just walks away. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what did you guys think about, uh, we'll do, touch on art here in a minute, but uh, we got introduced to like the rival school. Uh, Inasano or whatever they are with the cute little Genki picture. Do you guys not remember him? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> blonde like, boy. Yeah, little blonde boy. Yeah. Who's also a like, southpaw. I want to see Furuya. Where is he? <laughs> <laughs> just like, god damn. <laughs> he finally sees him and he's like, ew. <laughs> he's like yeah. sweaty and passed out. <laughs> that was actually amazing. <laughs> Um, but that, yeah, we that was May, right? Yeah, May. Yeah, that's his name. I was trying to remember. Um, yeah, they're, uh, we didn't get to see very much of them here. 
But it definitely is setting them up for being like Sado's rivals and stuff, like the rival school. Um, should we talk about art? Sure. What are you guys' feelings on the art? I thought the art was super clean. Mm hmm. Um, there was one chapter that had like a we're flashing back to a thing that happened section that went on for a while, and they did this weird, like, kind of sketchy look to it so that you knew like it was, it was a bad tv connection in the past, yeah, yeah and i kept being like is it supposed to look <laughs> like it looks yeah. so scribbly <laughs> like yeah a bad tv connection is the right yeah. way to put it. it looked like it looked like it wasn't filled in properly it was mm -hmm. i didn't yeah i didn't like that choice either um, i like the i think the art like when whenever they're playing or whenever they're pitching or whenever anything, it's just so nice to look at because mm -hmm. it look, it, it's just like, it's so strong and so defined. And I, I mm -hmm. love all the action scenes in the manga, but otherwise, aside from all of that, I think it's a really like just gorgeously illustrated manga when it comes to sports manga. I love the art. I think it's great. And the detail <coughs> during the games, I really enjoy. So I think the art is pretty good. Awesome. Um, I agree. Uh, I, I really like the art for this manga, uh, specifically how it goes about communicating action. Mm -hmm. um, we've read other sports manga, and you know, most of what we've read has been pretty good because because we've been like really selective mm -hmm. with the manga that we've brought on. Yeah. Um, but in terms of like communicating from one panel to the next and not losing anything in the process, I feel like this is one of the better ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. It makes it flow really well, too. Mm -hmm. um, and like Alyssa said, the define like it has a lot of power, especially like when Tetsu is up there, um, when Miyuki hits sometimes, and when they're just big plays. Like the emotion sometimes comes out really well with it, um, with having it be so strong. Um, I think my only thing is that sometimes when uh, it's not usually during like serious moments but if there's a lot of characters around the faces don't get drawn and so there's sometimes where i'm like all right whose hair is it because i don't yeah. know but or like yeah. there's moments when they're like all on the all on the mound talking to like the pitcher and there's times where i'm like i can't even tell which fielder is there or not because it's like which one are you because you don't really have a face but it's a very minor critique overall it doesn't happen like it doesn't take away from it's never used in a moment where it shouldn't be there or it takes away from anything. But that's just something that I noticed. But overall, I absolutely love the art. Like, I love the, um, like, the times that I prefer, like, I agree with Lou that you should definitely watch the anime to get the full, like, effect and, like, the intensity. Um, but there's times when I want to read the manga because I prefer the art style of the manga so much more than the anime. Um... And so I just think the characters look a lot better and sometimes, like, just the action is, like, really good in there. But, like Lou said, like, the anime is definitely easier to watch and it's, like, really oh, good. Yeah. Um, yeah, overall, I absolutely love the art. I think Miyuki is drawn much better in the art than he's done in the anime. I'm not, I'm not hating. I'm just saying. Miyuki is much prettier in the, an in the manga. But whatever. It's fine. I it's agree. Fine. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. fine. <laughs> Um, all right, do you guys have any other thoughts or should we wrap up and give our final ratings? Mm. Um. Oh, um, since we keep on mentioning the anime, it's worth mentioning that um, it was done by production IG and Matt Madhouse. Mm -hmm. So it's a collaborative work between the two of them. Uh, so the openings are so good. Oh, yes. <laughs> the openings yeah. are so good. <laughs> Huh. And yeah, that's that's the last thing I had to say. Cool. Sweet. Anyone want to go first for final thoughts and ratings? Um, <coughs> I can go. <coughs> I don't know what I gave it last time, but I feel like overall everything that we've read so far is like... Uh, I would say an eight for me. Mm -hmm. um, this section was like seven-ish. <laughs> Yeah, but um, but I I really I like it overall. It scratches like my my sports itch for sure. 
Um, it's got like really cool dynamic characters that are that are changing and developing, and I love that. Um, I just wanted, like, now that we're in the actual thick of it, we're playing lots of games, I wanted those games to feel really awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, this last one that we read was pretty cool, but leading up to that, having, like, quite a few games in this reading, it feels like we had one big, long, kind of dull game, and then one kind of shorter, good game. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. So uh, I still enjoyed it. I still definitely recommend that people read it. Um, but I think this section was a little lackluster. So I'm I'm definitely going to go and watch it in the anime and see how I feel about it instead. Um, I'm going to like piggyback off of everything Dodger said because those are kind of the scores that I had in mind. <laughs> uh, this section of reading is definitely inferior to the last bit of reading. But I know it is going to improve, like, going forward. Um, so this section, I would give a 7. Uh, overall, so far, an 8. But I know that it's going to ramp up from here, especially when we get into um, more conflicts with uh, which... I mean, we kind of mentioned that May's school is, is the upcoming rival school, which, I mean, they kind of, like, foreshadow that. So I don't really consider that a spoiler. Yeah. But... Um, like once we get into into later later games, um, it's really going to ramp up if it's anything like the anime. You know, if the anime is a one to one adaptation, which Madhouse tends to do, then um, I fully expect this to like really kick you know kick it up a notch and really become something special. So, um, like I said, my score for this section of reading is a seven overall. I'm currently sitting at about an eight out of ten. <laughs> I think I'm in the same same boat. <laughs> um, I would, for overall, I would give it an eight. I really like the spirit. I really like the sports. I like the characters. Really, it's just overall, it's a great story. But the chapters that we read this time around, I would have to also give like around the seven, just because everything felt like it was just one big thing, one game after another. They were training, and then once they get into the real matches, you're like. Oh, you know, it kind of feels like everything is the same. So mm. I would have to give this portion of what we read a seven. Uh, but um, from what it sounds like, especially in the anime, uh, I can expect more bigger and better things to happen. So I'm looking forward to the rest of it. But this little portion so far wasn't as great as the previous portion mm. that we read. But still, overall, it's an enjoyable manga to read. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with all of you. As like a huge fan of the series, uh, this section is so it's so slow compared to especially the first part and what comes next. Um, yeah. which is why when I was deciding what chapters we were gonna read, I was like, we gotta have we gotta have this one game in there to like <laughs> make it a little bit exciting. Um but yeah, I agree that this section is definitely um around a seven, uh, and the rest isn't probably like a as, right now, it's definitely an eight. Um, everything that you guys said, I agree with. The characters are great. I love their banter. The humor is like my kind of humor. I love it so much. Uh, the way that the characters are developing is awesome, and the art is just amazing. I absolutely love it. So if it's a, if you're looking for a sports anime or uh, manga or anime, um, definitely check this one out. I think it's one that I think it got overlooked a lot because especially the first season when it came out. It came out with um, Ajime no Ippo, Kuroko, and yeah. Haikyuu. I think Haikyuu might have come out either the same time or the next season. So it kind of, maybe it was like two seasons later. I can't remember. But um, it definitely, like, deserves, I don't see nearly as many people talking about it as definitely should be talking yeah. about it. So uh, definitely go and check it out. We all recommend it. 100%. Mm -hmm. Go check out Ace Diamond. <laughs> um, so that wraps up our discussion on that. I am going to read the description for <coughs> the manga that we are reading next week. Uh, and everybody in chat gets to guess what it is. People should be ex real excited about it. Um, blank, former captain of his high school's blank team turned delinquent, decides to drop out of school after he's crushed by the guilt of ruining a young girl's life in a traffic accident. As he dedicates his free time to helping her, he stumbles upon Blank, a former 
sprinter who has lost the use of his right leg and now plays wheelchair blank as an alternate outlet. After challenging him to a one-on-one -on -one game, Tomomi, oh, well, that's his name, uh, is completely defeated. <laughs> Inspired by this encounter, he realizes that he can't let his love for Blank die so easily and decides that he will do what he can to help while up others while striving to become a professional player. Meanwhile, Blank, Blank's replacement as the high school team captain, gets into an accident and finds himself permanently paralyzed below the waist. Blank tells the touching tale of these three young men as they struggle to overcome their disabilities and inner conflicts in order to achieve their dreams while igniting a passion that will bring them together. I love this manga so much. <coughs> it's real on, good. Real good. good. It's real good. <laughs> um, they wouldn't have known if you hadn't. You wouldn't have there's, known. There's a hint. There's a hint <laughs> in case someone didn't catch that. Um, it's it was called done good. By the Avi's got yes, it! Yay! Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, it's drawn by the same person that's um, that does Vagabond. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. like, if you've ever read either Vagabond or Slam Dunk, mm -hmm. um, and you like those things, you're probably gonna like Real, because Real is real good. Mm-hmm. 100%. Um, so excited that we're coming back to that. So, next week, we're going to be reading Real chapters 49 through 75. So, that was... Um, oh? Mm -hmm. I, I was going to ask, I know that this is, uh, this is not following our usual script, but can I please read a thing that uh, Oh My Stephanie just posted? Oh my god, I, yes! I know what you're I talking about. It's relevant. Yes, I think please. it's relevant to our show. I know exactly what you're <clears> talking about. She got this DM. Mm -hmm. Stephanie, if you read this, please reply this message. It is important. If you like anime or hentai manga, you can join my project. You can't know new everything about anime and hentai manga. I am senpai slash sensei of roleplay anime and hentai. But you must have audition first, like all other women. If you want, this is your destiny, my baby girl. <laughs> Can you read his uh, username, please? Uh, read his username. <laughs> Real male dom Polly Mary style. <laughs> is his whole name. <laughs> He's a real male, guy. <laughs> real. I'm real. It, it ties a, into the manga. It ties in! It does! It all came together. Oh my god, I died when I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> so good. I like that it's like, you have to audition, but you can't join. It's <laughs> really cool. Yeah. Because he is the senpai slash sensei, guys. <laughs> Amazing. Is, is, he the, is he the baseball Hokage? <laughs> I'm not gonna take him seriously if he's not the baseball, baseball hookah. You can't just join that shit. <laughs> <laughs> you have to audition like all the other girls if you want. If you want. It's your destiny, Lou. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I just felt like I oh needed my God, to read I that. I still it. had it up in a tab and I was like, oh my god, I forgot about this. <laughs> love it. Uh we're gonna go out and go ahead and shout out our stuff really quick. Um, I'm Erin of Happily Erin. I have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Happily Erin. Uh, it's basically just the Manga Pod channel right now, but that's totally fine. Uh, so it has all of the previous Manga Pods hosted there, as well as if you want to check out any of my uh, previous reviews, first impressions, uh, mental health awareness stuff, uh, you can go ahead and check that out. I'm much more active on Twitter. <coughs> Excuse me on Twitter right now, um, so if you want to go follow me, uh, season 5 of Voltron just came out, so that's basically just been my spam, so, that's me. Uh, hi guys, I'm Dodger, you, uh, might be watching this on my Twitch channel right now, I burped in there, but it was silent, <laughs> so. That was good, <laughs> that, that, that was pause, smooth. That pause wasn't just, like, <laughs> it was for dramatic effect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, you can find me at Dex Bonus on pretty much everything. Um, we've got an awesome merch store up that you can find on the Yeti store. And also, uh, I have a coffee company that you can find at DodgerCoffeeCo.com. And that's it. Yay! Very nice. It's getting me my emergency. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Lou, and I'm from a, uh... I guess a YouTube channel, Lou Talks Anime, where I, I don't really post content anymore, but whatever. I've been playing video games, so you can, like, watch my streams, I guess. Um, my Twitch is Lou Plays Games. Uh, I usually play chess because it's kind of work-related, because I, I work at a school, and I'm the chess coach for the school, 
and I'm okay, but I, I, by my standards, I suck. So that's, <laughs> that's what my streams are. It's me playing people that are better than me, losing a lot and learning from the experience. Nice. Um, oh, I love it. And, and I'll be, I'm going to eventually play other things, but so far, like I'm really, really into chess. So I'm just going to be playing a lot of chess and, uh, yeah, uh, talk to me on Twitter. I'm on there a lot. Uh, Lutox anime and that's all my stuff. Yeah. And I'm Anime Intensity. Well, I'm Melissa from Anime Intensity. <laughs> that's my channel. Uh, yeah, I do a lot of anime-related content. You can find me on Twitter at Anime Intensity. I'm mostly there every single day and stuff. So um, <laughs> thanks for having me. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much for coming on. We love having you here. We'll have to have you on next time we talk about Ace of Diamond, for sure. Yes. You and if you, watch, <laughs> if you watch the anime, you let Lou and I know how you're liking it. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> um, sweet. Yeah, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much uh, to chat for, or chat, to Twitch and YouTube for watching this. If you're watching the VOD, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you would like to get more MangaPod, we have a subreddit, reddit.com slash r slash MangaPod. Uh, it has a schedule posted for um, up to the end of June. Uh, and we also have a recommendation thread, so if there is a, <coughs> a manga that you would like to, uh, us to check out go ahead and post it there if it's already there go ahead and upload it and we'll check it out um yeah so thank you guys so much for watching we will be here same time same place next week 7 30 p.m pacific time talking real chapters 49 through 75 we will see you guys then bye 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 bye, bye. 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 bye.